8. I don't believe it gets to part 20. We'll take it as the Holy Spirit is taking us. Praise the Lord. Let's just bow to pray quickly. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, don't worry, we'll redeem the time. We'll just handle one aspect of what we need to do and then we close. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we honor you. We come into the word yet again, asking for fresh unction, fresh anointing upon my heart again and upon my lips so that I may hear and speak accurately as an oracle of God. We pray that that same anointing will be upon the ears and the hearts of all those who are hearing this word, those of us physically present, so as those who are hearing this word electronically through the uh, social media channels, YouTube, Facebook, that the word will come forth in, in, in simplicity, in clarity, in power. And Lord, you will help me to speak as I should, as an oracle of God. In the name of Jesus, let the words be packed by the gifts of the Spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, workings of miracles, discernment of spirits, gift of healings and of special faith, so that they will generate and release power, power to heal, power to deliver, power to break you, power to free men, so that we all shall be doers of the things that we hear and not hear us only. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help me to redeem the time to create what you only want me to do, bring out of the church of this world, things new and old, as if Christ instructed unto the kingdom, in Jesus, wonderful name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Stop thinking about rice. Think about the word of God. When we finish eating this one, we will go and eat rice. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 2. We are in Revelation chapter 2. Uh, the letters to the churches. Just to remind us, the Holy Spirit had showed us that there are certain things that the Lord Jesus himself wrote to seven churches. And if you are a good Bible student, and if you remember the names of the seven churches, they are the churches in Ephesus, Smyrna, Pegamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. They, re they represented the different churches in Asia Minor at the time that the Lord Jesus gave this revelation to John. Now, these were Christian churches that were set up by Paul and other Christian leaders at that time. And many of them started off very well. And over time, the Lord Jesus, who is the head of the church, was able to look and assess, make an assessment of those different churches. And in his assessment of the churches, he realized that there were certain churches that had made some mistake and had made some errors. And so he now addressed those seven churches. And in those letters, he wrote some things that were correct, that the churches were doing, and he ticked them right. And then he also understood that there were some things that the churches were not doing properly, and he pointed them out. And he asked them to correct those things. See, every time that God is speaking to us, he does not do it from a point of condemnation. Praise the Lord. He does it from a point of correction. Let me say that again. Every time God is speaking to us, he doesn't speak to us as a point of condemnation. God does not condemn. The Bible says who is that God justifies. Who is he that condemns? Praise the Lord. So when God is showing you something, he's not telling you that thing because he wants to condemn you. He's telling you that thing because he wants you to correct it. Because if you don't correct it, it might have negative consequences. Praise the Lord. It's somebody with me this afternoon. Now God always wants the best for us. So, Jesus, the Lord Jesus here pointed out the errors of these churches and asked them to correct them. And he said that if they did not correct them, then their candlestick would be taken away, which means that those errors can lead to those churches being shut down. And unfortunately, unfortunately, those churches did not take the correction. And so these areas, all these places, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pegamos, Theatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. In modern day times, they are all in a country, one country called Turkey. And that nation is now an Islamic country. So those churches, most of them, where they were worship, are in ruins, and Christianity is, does not exist in those places anymore. Instead, we have Islam, we have Islam entrenched in those places, which means they did not take the correction. Praise the Lord. Now, 
as many Christians are not taking the correction. Now, the, the, the Lord Jesus said to us, through his Holy Spirit, which is why we are studying it, that the churches now represent each one of us. Because we now are the temple of the living God. Praise the Lord. The church is not a physical building. This physical building is just the place where we are having worship services. Because before we came here, we were meeting in a small school hall in state housing, and it was keeping the lighthouse party in church. Praise the Lord. But today we are here. Tomorrow, God decides that this place is too small and that we should build an auditorium in Las Vegas or in Las, Las Palmas. And we move there. It will still be the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it's not really about the building. It's about us. We are God's house. We are God's building. So all those mistakes that these churches made are evident in the lives of Christians today. Okay. And if we don't correct them, then the same thing that happened to the corporate church, in the, I heard the Holy Spirit say, even in those corporate churches, there were individuals. So those individuals suffered a faith that we can also suffer. Praise the Lord. So that's why he said we should study. Study these letters. They are letters which Paul, sorry, John received by revelation and he saw Jesus. We looked little for example. I was this that written for example. We looked at we titled it Walking with God as We Should. So, the ways we are walking, let's correct it. And we are now in, I think, chap chapter 8. The, this is the eighth session. Sister Christine, how many now? We are now at 8. Ah, part eight. And in part 8 now, we are looking at the church of, uh, of Thyatira. Thy 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 if you are in Thyatira, we are still in the Pergamos church. Praise the Lord. We're in Revelation chapter 2. You know, we've not finished the third church. So, Franka shouldn't take us on a race. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we are still on the third church. We are not rushing. Pegamos. So, let's go to Revelation chapter 2 from verse 12. Revelation chapter 2, verse 12. These letters were written in the book of Revelation, which means they were things, the revelation of the Lord Jesus given to the church. So, I'll get there so that we can read together as is our custom. Revelation chapter 2 and in verse 12 we read to 17. Let's go. Together. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right. These things, says he, who has what? The sharp who edged sword. Stop. So that we don't come back because we already dealt with this. What do we say in the sharp two edged sword? The word of God. Bible says the word is like a double-edged sword cutting aside between soul and spirit and dividing asunder. So what Jesus is saying says, I'm the one that has the word. Let's go. I know your works. Turn to your neighbor and say, the Lord Jesus knows your works. Say everything you're doing, he knows. What you're, if you're serving him, he knows. If you're not serving, he knows. If you're praying, he knows. If you're not praying, he knows. Uh-huh. Let's go. I know your works. Yes, and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name, and do not deny my name, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was filled among you where Satan dwelt. So he's teaching the church correct in some things. You are in a place where the devil is manifest. You are in a place where Satan has held sway. But yet, you have not denied my name. You have not allowed all the wickedness that the enemy is planting to make you deny my name. Praise the Lord. And there are many Christians who in the midst of persecution and affliction and all that have not denied the name of the Lord. So you need to be sitting here, listening to me, watching this, listening to me. You have not denied the name of the Lord. Who wants to us Who wants to clap us I know who is our God. Amen. No matter what we say, he's our God. We are like we are like uh, Joshua. Say this: As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. We shall not turn back. We will not go back. Say it: I will not go back. I will serve the Lord. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. That's in Christ Jesus. You are not saying so. Is this thing that people are going so? Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus. 
Men of the situation, the family, the parents, the son, the principalities, the powers, the things that have made, or things yet to be made, I say it to them. Those things are separate men from the love of God. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord of God trust me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, this was the Pergamos church. Jesus said, I know. You stay where Satan's seat is, but you have not denied. Let's go on. Next verse. But, verse 14, I have a few things against you. Mm. Because you have there, where, where, where is there in the church? Those who ruled the doctrine of Bela, who taught Bela to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, one, to eat things, sacrifice to idols, two, and to commit sexual immorality. Verse 16. Verse 16, sorry. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which King I hate. Turn to your neighbor and say, there are things that God hates. And we must never do those things. Praise the Lord. Things that I hate. But what does he say? What the next verse? Repent. Or else I will come to you. How? Quickly. And I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Then he goes to say, he who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then because he knows it's difficult, he says, to win who is at heart. And I will give some of the hidden manner to him. And I will give him a white stone revelation. And on that stone, a new name reaches, which no one knows except him who receives it. Hallelujah. So there are things to change. And when we overcome and we get it, God will give us something. Hallelujah. All right. Now, the first thing that we dealt with, there are three major things here. The doctrine of Bilal. Sacrificing to idols. Sexual immorality. We can sum all those things in one word. Compromise. Now, we looked at the issue of doctrine. I remember in one of the earlier teachings, we speak about wrong doctrine that is in church. People that are thinking, teaching things that are totally unscriptural. Thinking, teaching things that are uh, uh, compromising and are not allowing people to stand and do then the doctrine of Balaam and Bela, he said that God, in that story which we looked at, uh, Balaam called Bela to, to, uh, to curse the children of Israel, the prophet, and he said, I cannot curse them. Whom God has blessed, no man can curse. But I will show you how to deal with them. Make them sin against their God. Once you can sin against their God, God is the person himself that will judge them. And he taught them two things to make them do. Idolatry and sexual immorality. The first one, and I want to deal with before we go into the issue of idolatry, which, and there's a lot of this going on in the church, is because the two of them are linked. In those days, most idol worship included sexual immorality. Praise the Lord. It was part of the worship of those ancient gods all the Zeus and all that, they had temple slaves, temple prostitutes, people that would just be in the, in the temple, in church, in the church, well, I won't call them churches, in temples, where people would come and worship, and they would just be having sexual immorality and just sleeping with themselves inside of the temples. It was part of the worship. Sacrificing things, killing animals, burning themselves, passing their children to the fire, doing all kinds of wicked things. So the two went hand in hand. Amen? And we will deal with the issue of, 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 of uh, idol worship, but I think that the Lord will have us start with the issue of sexual immorality. Praise the Lord. Please pay attention because I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak openly, I'm going to speak frankly, I'm going to refer, use the Bible for us to speak about these things. Now, uh, sexual immorality in the church is something that is rampant. It's rampant. Please sit down and stop all this moving around. Sit down. Sexual immorality is something that is rampant in the church. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 5. 
please let me say this for the people of Jesus. There's a time to move around. When we start ministering the word, spit your bottom on the chair. It's not the time to be moving around and looking to charge your phone or to plug your phone or do any. Put your bomb bomb down. Hold your Bible. Open your ear and listen to the word. When we are doing other things, you can, you need to go to the restroom. You choose. There's a time of order. It's not the time when the word is going forth. Reverence God. God is speaking to us. If you were in the governor's office and the governor is speaking to you, you won't get up and do his, your hand like this and walk out of the governor's office and go to the toilet. You will not. So when God is speaking his word, this is the time for us to pay attention. If you got up and move around, means you're not interested in what God is saying. That's, that's the meaning. And it's, you're not, I'm not talking my word. I'm speaking God's word. Don't let God interpret that in your life. Praise the Lord. Uh, the days of ignorance, God winked at. But now you know. Once it's time for the message, the word, sit down. That's where we don't want children disturbing. There's no disturbance. There's nobody walking around. You are paying attention for this 30, 45 minutes, however long it takes. And then after that, you're free to do what you want. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 5. Let's start from there. First Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 1. New King James is up there. Let's read verse 1. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife. Let's take different versions. Amplified. Amplified. It is actually reported everywhere that there is sexual immorality among you. Stop. Initially, when I used to read this scripture, I used to think that Paul was singling out one person. But the Holy Spirit opened my eye to see when I was looking at other versions that he said, it's not all brought out one case that was very bad. But that the report is that amongst you, there is sexual immorality. Come on. It is a kind of immorality that is from them, even among the unbelieving Gentiles, that someone has an intimate relationship with his father's wife. And you are proud, that next verse, and you are proud and arrogant, you should have mourned in shame so that the man who has done this disgraceful thing would be removed from your fellowship. Only thing that you have condoned it. You know it is going on, but you have accepted it. So it's alone. NLT. New Living Translation. Verse 1. I strayed into verse 2, but let's keep it in verse 1. New Living Translation. Yes. I can hardly believe the reports about the sexual immorality going on among you. So you see that it's not just one person. Now, this church in Corinth, the Bible tells us they lacked no spiritual gift. All the nine gifts of the Spirit were present. They were speaking in tongues. They were prophesying. There was word of wisdom, word of knowledge, uh, 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 workings of miracles, discernment of spirit, gift of healing. Things were going on in the church. Spiritual things. But there was sexual immorality. The reason why I want to address this is because the Lord Jesus himself is the one that has pointed out and used that word, sexual immorality. Now, let's break it down. What does the word immorality mean? The word Immoral means anything that goes against morals. So immorality, it means it goes against what morals? A violation of moral laws. There are laws, morality of how people should behave. If you violate them, then you are immoral or you're participating in immorality. Now when we talk of sexual immorality, there are different types. It is immoral, for instance, for you to steal. It's against good morals. It's immoral for you to, what should I say, abuse your parents. 
you know, talk rudely to your father. It's against the morals of society. So that's a form of immorality. But the focus of the Lord Jesus, he qualifies it as sexual immorality, which means, or shall do your work, which means that people are being immoral, going against the morals of the sexual laws or morals that are permissible by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, for us to go to know what you are going against, then we must know what the law is or what the morals are. Amen? Sexual immorality has to do with the issues of sex. What is sex? Sleeping, um, uh, sleeping or having sexual relations with somebody else. That is, those are the issues of sexual immorality, of, of sexuality. Now, immorality here, God gives us, in the Bible, rules or morals and how to protect ourselves the issue of sexuality. Leviticus chapter 18. Go there. A whole chapter of the Bible is dedicated to what is acceptable and what is not acceptable when it comes to the issue of sexuality. Leviticus chapter 18. Let me just drop this here. This is the written law. It was given in Leviticus. But in Genesis, when Potiphar is pursuing Potiphar's wife, sorry, is pursuing Joseph to sleep with her. Joseph makes a statement. I cannot do this thing and sin against God. Which means that even though the written law has not yet been received, there were already morals in place which God has put in the hearts of men. Praise the Lord. To the issue of sexuality. Joseph knew that it is not right. It is sin against God to sleep with somebody else's wife. We know that. Even though the it's not yet been given, this law was formally put down in Leviticus. Praise the Lord. They called it, it how can I do this great wickedness? Yes. And sin against, against God and sin against God. So let's look at what God. So when it came to time, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God now sat Moses down and gave him rules, laws on so many things. This chapter focuses on the area of sex. He says, let's read together. What else? I, I put, let's put it, I, I believe, uh, all right, let's use the New Living Translation. NLT version. Everybody, let's go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. I am the Lord your God. Listen, 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 listen. This next verse we want to read is so important to the way God looks at us. Verse 3. So, one, do not act like the people in Egypt where you used to live. Come, don't behave. I am the Lord your God. You are a different set of people. Don't behave how the people behaved in Egypt. Who are the people in Egypt? Those who were worshipping idols and living in any way. It was in Egypt that Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with a slave. She didn't care she was somebody's wife. She was running after the young boy to sleep with her. Which means in that culture, it was accepted. Praise the Lord. Let, well, maybe not accepted, but it was common practice. So God is saying, there is a way Egyptians used to behave. I don't want you to behave like that. One, one, or like the people of Canaan, where I'm taking you, you must not say it out. You must not imitate their way of life. They have a way they live. You as a child of God must not. 
if it's saying, if it's permissible, if they are doing it, you cannot do it. Praise the Lord. So if you see people doing wrong, and you are seeing people doing hookah, and you are seeing people prostituting themselves, you, uh, somebody asked me one, they said, Pastor, you know hookah? I think it was at a board meeting. He said, Pastor, you know what hookah is? So I asked him, I said, so you think, you think I am, I am, I am living in a bubble. Praise the Lord. My, Pastor Frank has said I should explain what hook up is. What, Pastor, it's simple. Hook you up with somebody. To hook up. But to hook you up, what we know as prostitution. That's what it is. Hook you up and then the person will pay. Give you money. So you do hook up. Oh, there's runs. Runs girls. It's a nice, it's a, those are different. Those are different. It's not, this guy's the same thing. Ron's, Ron's girls is a, is a, is a nice name for a prostitute. They do Ron's, you know, to make money. And they're also Ron's boys now. Yes. Both male and female prostitutes as they were in those days. Praise the Lord. Aha. Uh-huh. So they, they, they do hook up. And because we now have technology, you don't need to even see people. They hook up on the phone, hook up online and all that. So it's there. What's the last one I said? Side chick. Side chick is adultery. It means that there's a wife and then there's a side girlfriend. But it's not just girlfriend in that it's love. Money is changing hands. So there's side chick. So the man is maintaining a girlfriend outside and paying her bills. So she becomes the side chick. Pastor, is it clear? Praise the Lord. That, there's a lot. Amen. Some people are adjusting their seats. Say, hey, Pastor, now, wow. Yes, sir. And God says, it's going on. I can tell you so many things. For instance, you are in school and your classmates is sleeping with the lecturer for math and grief. And you too, you want to do the same thing. God says, if you are a child of God, you cannot live like that. Praise the Lord. You cannot. Because if you live like them, Jesus knows your works and can come quickly and take away your life. It kills. We're going to get into it. You must not imitate their way of life. Let's go on. Next verse. You must, everybody say must is a command. What does he say? You must obey all my regulations and be careful to be obey my decree, for I am the Lord your God. If you obey my decree and my regulations, you will find life through them. I am the Lord. The six. You must never sexual relations with a close relative, for I am the Lord. God begins to talk about incest. Incest is having sexual relations with somebody that you have blood relationship with. And he goes on to break it down. He says, Do not violate your father by having sexual relations with your mother. A child, male child, cannot sleep with his mother. Now, for us, we may be sure, how, how can it is going on? It is going on. The, the, the stepmother is there. We are going to get there. It is there. It is going on. In this, as on this earth, it is going on. Praise the Lord. There are mothers who sleep with their children. Next verse. She, uh, let's go. She is your mother. You must not have sexual relations with her. Next verse. Do not have, you only really to stop me. This is both for male and female. Because there are mothers who sleep with their daughter. Wifey, hear me well. I know what I'm saying. 
there are mothers that sleep with their daughters. Lesbianism. They violate their children. They do it. There are sisters that sleep with their sisters. There are brothers that sleep with their sister. It's incestuous. It's called incest. It is not to be heard. It is immorality of the highest order. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. Do not have sexual relations with any of your father's wives. That is the stepmother. For this will violate your father. And we are going to show you. I'm going to show you through scripture. This is what Reuben did. Our church. Reuben slept with uh, 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 the, 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 the how. Bilhah, the maidservant of, of Leah, he slept with his brother's mothers, Bad and Naphtali. Bilhah, what's her name again? Bilhah, Bilhah was the mother of two of his brothers, Naphtali and Gad, I believe. But Reuben, the firstborn, slept with her, and their father, Jacob, Israel, knew. So when it was time for the blessing, he cursed him. He cursed him. There are repercussions for all these things. You shall unstable. He cursed him. Say you are unstable as we were going to get it. And he cursed him. He said, because, because you can never excel in life because you violated your father's bed. Praise the Lord. Do not have sex for this will violate your father. Go on, go on. Let's read. It's, well, today is interesting. Let's go. Do not have sexual relations with your sister or half sister, whether she's your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born into your household or someone else. So even if it's not the same father with you or the same mother with you, even if your father married a woman and that woman has a child and is not your relation because of that marriage of your father and the woman, you cannot have sexual relations with her. Praise the Lord. You know, there was a, there was, there's a song, <laughs> Shame and Scandal in the Family. <laughs> it was a very hit song and I believe it was a true story. You know, one man wanted to marry. He went to meet his, his, his father. He said, Dad, I found a wife. He said, and he showed the wife. He said, who is the wife? He said, that lady. He said, no, you can't marry her. He said, no, son, no. That girl is your sister, but your mama don't know. So he said, ah, you can't marry her. She's your sister. That is, she's my child, but your mother doesn't know. The boy went back home quietly, found another girl, came and told the father, dad, I've seen another wife. He said, who is she? This girl in that house. He said, no, 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 no. No, son, no. That girl is your sister, but your mama don't know. He found the third one, went, told the father, the father, three, you know, no, 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 it's one. He now went, another one, he said, daddy, uh, finally I found the girl of my dream, he said, who he called her, he said, no, that girl is your sister, but your mama don't know. That's three. The boy can't take it. You have to report to the mother. He said, mommy, you're staying here, you don't know anything. This one is daddy's child. This one is daddy's child. This one is daddy's child. I wanted to marry her. And they said, no. The mother looked at him. He said, son, go, son, go. Go, son, go. Your daddy ain't your daddy, but your daddy don't know. So the guy was singing, he said, woe is me, shame and scandal in the family. The mother told the son, you are free to marry them. That your father is not, is not your father, but he does not know. In this world now, in Nigeria right now, many fathers are finding out that the children that they are bringing up are not their children. It is DNA that has made people now know you bring up a child and think it is your child only from, from, the, from, the, from birth, only to find out after about 20 something years 
that the woman had the child for another man. It's enough to destroy somebody. Praise the Lord. It's enough to destroy. What person is that? Immorality. A woman who is married who can hold herself, go to sleep with someone. Or a man who has a wife sleeps with someone else. And so there is shame and scandal. And all this is going on. And let me help you. The reason why God is attacking it is going on in the church. You will see pastors sleeping with congregational people. Somebody in the choir sleeping will move from one person to the other, to the other, inside the church. Going on. Naming the name of Christ. It was going on in the current church. It's going on in this church. And this is out there. It's going on in the church right handily. And God says, no, we can't continue. We can't live like this. There are rules. They are lost. Praise the Lord. Do not, let's go on, have sexual relations. Are you with me? Are you with me? Do not have sexual relations with who? Your granddaughter. I thought we have passed there. We have passed there. We've done verse 9. You have sexual relations with your sister or half sister, whether she's your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born into a household or someone else. And again, I'm speaking about both male and female. You sleep on the same bed, two sisters. You sleep on the same bed. You deny it. You'll be touching yourselves. It's a sin against God. You cannot. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. And I'm speaking with the boldness of the Holy Spirit because this has to go out. Next verse. Do not have sexual relations with your granddaughter. That is your child. Not your child. You can't sleep with them. Combination. Whether she's your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, for this would violate yourself. You are sinning against yourself. Your own blood. You are sleeping with your blood. You are correcting your blood. You have a grandchild and you sleep with it, grandchild. Listen to me. It's not Moses who wrote this. It's not Franklin who wrote it. It's God. Because he saw what men were doing. Uh, my, my, my wife said this Old Testament. It didn't start today. It's just something that has kept going on and on and on and on and on. Next, next verse. Do not have sexual relations with your stepsister, the daughter of any of your father's wives, for she is your sister. What was the thing that got Absalom so angry with his brother? His half brother. Why was Absalom so 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 annoyed with his brother? Because his brother slept with his sister Dina. You know, they were just it was a family, baby children. They were from different women. So they're growing up together. The brother saw his half sister and then fought himself on her, slept with her. And and then and then the brother, the brother who was the same mother with her, Absalom, heard it. He was so angry, he wanted to kill his brother. Not that he wanted to, he actually killed him. But, but, uh, yes, Amon, but he had to scream a way to do it. It violates, it brings nothing but shame and confusion and disorder. It's out of order. It is immoral against the morals. Praise the Lord. Oh my God. Don't let me get into scriptures. What made Solomon so immoral? What made Solomon, one man, go and think of having 700 wives and 300 concubines? 1,000 women. One man. Is, 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 was, was that, is that normal? Oh, 
Praise the Lord. What, where are we? Verse 12. Do not have sexual relations with your father's sister, for she is your father's first relative. Do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, for she is your mother's close relative, your auntie. That's what she is. Do not violate your uncle, your father's brother, by having sexual relations with his wife, for she is your aunt. Do not have sexual relations with your daughter in law. She is your son's wife. You must, you must not have sexual relations with her. Your son goes to bring a young, nice, sweet girl to marry. And you are old. And you see the young girl. And the son goes out. And you corner her in the house and sleep with her. It's an abomination. And it is going on. Praise the Lord. Where are we? Verse 16. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. For this will violate your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. And do not take her granddaughter, whether her son's daughter, or her daughter's daughter, and have sexual relations with her, they are close relatives, and this would be a wicked answer. While your wife is living, do not marry her sister, and have sexual relations with her, so they will be relatives. Do not have sexual relations with a woman during her period of menstrual impurity. Do not defile yourself by having sexual intercourse with your neighbor's wife. You are defiling yourself. Adultery. 21. Do not permit any of your children to be offered as a sacrifice to Molech. For you must not bring shame on the name of your God and of the Lamb. 22. Do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man as with a man, it is a detestable sin. The same thing of the same sex. Homo means the same. Homo sapiens, the same way. Homo means we are the same. Homosexual means you are having sex with somebody of the same sex. Man to man, woman to woman. It's homosexuality. But in the, for the women, they call it lesbianism. But in scripture, they are homosexuals. Homo means they are the same kind. They have the same private parts. They sleep with themselves. They have intercourse with each other. They exchange juices. They kiss themselves. They sleep with themselves. They put different things into their bodies. It is a gross thing. It's a grave sin. And the Bible says it is a detestable sin. The King James and New King James says it is an abomination. Next one. A man must not defile himself by, by having sex with an animal. And a woman must not offer herself to a male animal to have intercourse with it. This is a perverse act. Don't tell me that this one is not happening. I know about it. This one, when we were in university, one of the university students, the girls were caught for sex, sleeping with a dog. It was a big story. They do it. In fact, people who are perverse, they pay big money. Even in Nigeria, they pay money to women to sleep with their dog. Some give up not as a hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, sleep with my dog and collect the money. And a woman will set herself for a dog to mount her and penetrate her because of money. Abroad, the people marry animals. Marry themselves. They wear the animal, a horse or a dog, a wedding gown, and go to a place, a register, and marry. So it is husband and animal that are wife. Perversity. Praise the Lord. He goes on to say, do not defile yourself in any of these ways. For the people I'm driving out before you have defiled themselves in some. 
all these ways because the entire land has become the child. I'm punishing the people who live there to force the land to vomit them out. Sometimes a land is under a curse because all these things are going on inside the land. The other day we were, the other day we were going, we were going on Calabar to road. I voiced it out. Went to drop the children. We're driving on that road. A road that takes normally 45 minutes. It's about 60 or 70 kilometers to you. It's not up to 100. It takes four hours, five hours. When I was complaining, somebody told me, you are lucky. Four hours. Now some people sleep there and get there the next day. And the road is so terrible and has been like that for not two years, not four years, not eight years, more than 10 years. And I said, who was us? And the answer is, which part do we bring on the land? How come this land is like this? Do we be because of all this immorality? We're getting ready for the carnival now, where people will dance naked on the streets and they share condoms and do all kinds of things against God. Why will the land not be desired? Why is there so much poverty in the land? There's too much immorality. Too much. Pastor, you're going there. Is it not just last week that the police rounded up two weeks ago and paraded on TV a hotel where a gay wedding was taking place? 70 young men, some dressed like women, they were getting married inside the hotel. The police rounded them up. Another one, the state government, the new government, they didn't want to name the hotel. They sent police to a place where they were having a, a gay party. They were busy dancing, men and women, in Scalabar. And on Sunday, they will go to church. And they will sing in the choir. And some of them will preach. Immorality. The Lord Jesus saw it. And it's seen it. Because the entire land has become defiled, I am punishing the people who live there, whether they did it or not. We can be suffering because of some other person's sin. We are not doing it. But because the people are here, the punishment is on the land. So where the land will be giving us jobs, please. Where the land Bring us money, close it. So you're busy, you know, you know, you are praying. Just as that idiot, that Phineas killed, when people were praying, he carried one, he followed what Bellam had told him, carried one of midnight girls into the room to go and sleep with her. Phineas saw it. People were, it's just like being in church. You know that we are here, we are praying during Tuesday, fasting and praying. Once somebody will pass through that door, and enter into one of maybe the toilets to go and have sex while we are praying. Tinia, the son of the high priest, saw it. He was so angry. He carried a spear, went while they were in the axe. He speared the two of them and killed them. And God said, Thank God for Finia. The plague that had already entered the church was stopped because he did that. Because of what two people were doing, the whole community were now being killed. People were dead. That's why this message is going out. We must stop it. The pastor, it's just my man, just my girlfriend, just my, I'm just having a relationship with her. You are killing both yourself and the land. Praise the Lord. I don't even know if we'll be able to finish this. Hmm. You must obey all my decrees and regulations. You must not, I, I, sorry, let's go back. Because the entire land has become defiled, I am punishing the people who live there. I will cause the land to vomit them out. You must obey all my decrees and regulations. You must not commit any of these detestable sins. It applies both to the native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. All these detestable activities are practiced by the people of the land where I'm taking you. 
And this is how that land has become defiled. Now you can understand why God was telling the children of Israel, kill everybody. Kill the men, the women. Don't let any one of them stay alive. He has seen what they have been doing over the years. Over the years. Somebody will have children. You don't even know whether the children are your children or they're not your children. Somebody is marrying somebody. You don't know whether you're marrying your sister or your brother. There are all kinds of immorality. He says, so do not defy the land and give it a reason to vomit you out, as it will vomit out the people who live there now. Whoever commits any of these detestable sins will be cut off from the community of Israel to obey my instructions. Do not defy yourself. Are we still reading with me? By committing any of these disabled practices that were committed by the people who lived in land before you, I am the Lord your God. The whole then in the Ten Commandments, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 18, in the Ten Commandments, what we call the Ten Commandments, it is such an important rule that the Lord Jesus put it there. I hope that's correct. Uh, it's not 18. 17. Yes. Is it 20? Eighteen. Sorry. Twenty. Sorry. Sorry. You're correct. Exodus 20. So he's giving the Ten Commandments. And then in verse, he goes on, you must not steal, you must not murder, uh, honor your father and your mother. Verse 12, verse 13, verse 14. Well, verse 14 is inside, you must not Commit adultery. You must not. It's a commandment. Adultery is sleeping with anybody that is married that is not your wife or your husband. It's adultery. A married person sleeping with somebody who is not their husband or their wife is adultery. Then he goes on. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. Your neighbor's male. Or female server, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. You must not, you must not, is there twice. You must not convert your neighbor's wife or servant, whether male or female. So it's the law. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Luke 18. Let me try to bring this to a logical place where we can pick it up. Obviously, we can't finish because the Lord has given me a lot. Luke 14. Uh, verse 18, 18, 18. Good memory verse. Luke 18, 18. Once the religious leader asked Jesus this question, Peter, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? I'm still in the NLT. Why do you call me good? Is favor seen reading? Jesus has seen only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. What was the first commandment he said? You must not. He didn't say you must not kill. Just kill. The first thing he said, you must not commit adultery. Before he goes to murder. Which means adultery is more devious than murder. That broadcast so terrible. Completely. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And verse 4. Hebrews 13. And verse 4. Still keeping it LLT. Let's go. Osha, are you reading or you are just sitting? Let's read together. Please honor to marriage. And do what? Remain faithful one another in marriage. What will happen? God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Surely. We talked about judgment early. It, he will surely judge. You can't escape it. Hey, Pastor, my husband is not around most of the time. You know? He, he goes, he leaves me alone. I feel lonely. 
and there's, there's, there's no feelings inside. It's just that my body, my body needs something. Uh, your body is looking for death. You will die. The same thing. There's a brother, there's a guy, I don't call him a brother, he's a friend, I knew the family. We went for the burial. It was, it was pathetic. His wife, they married, got married, they were living together with us, we were you then. And, you know, nice guy, had a daughter, loving family, everybody looked at them on the outside, very nice. Suddenly we heard that the husband had, the man had died in a car crash on the way to Abuja. It was, everybody was devastated. This wonderful couple, what happened? Only for the story to come out. Young, the daughter was about two or three. Because while the corpse was lying down in the church, the daughter was hitting the corpse. He said, Daddy, wake up. Daddy, get up, get up. She didn't still understand what was going on. The girl, the wife, cried, cried, cried. The friends who knew what had happened were looking at her. After they had seen her cry for too long, they you don't know what that man has been doing. Every time he leaves you here and says he's going on business, he's carrying, he says Abuja, he's carrying that girl and going. That was, my wife was saying, the side chick. They have been doing it since. On this particular day, Dutchman fell. They had a car crash. He died instantly on the spot. The girl was, her legs were cut off. She's still alive. But immediately her legs were off. That's the judgment of God. You are sleeping with another person's husband. See, so now you have no legs. When they told her, she said, eh, I never knew. She said, Don't cry again. And she was, though she was in a secular church, she was busy in the prayer band of that church. Praying and praying and praying. Her husband is philandering. One of you who are playing games, it's a dangerous, it's a very dangerous game. Very, very, very dangerous. Very. Because, because it is God himself that will answer that case. Another case in Kaaba, there was this guy in this church who used to come. Beautiful, young, nice Christian. That's why we're talking, these things are going on in church. The guy, in my former church, anytime we didn't have the keyboardies was not there, he would come. Once he sees the place empty, he would slide in, play. Very humble, very nice, very lovely. We used to call him an angel. He would play. Pastor, thank you. Pastor, God bless you. Pastor, Pastor, I'm off to my church. Anytime that his church was not meeting, he was always with us. Suddenly we heard that he has died in that crash on Calabai to Road. It was, we heard that. They said, I died. I died. I can't do no, no, no. We were trying. For the this to come out about two or three weeks later, that the person he died with in the car crash was his partner, a woman, and they were on their way to Portacot to continue their love affair. They died in a car crash on Calabai. As soon as we heard that, we couldn't talk again. Because it's God, they will go to heaven. They will go to heaven. But we died. Deliver him to Satan for the destruction of the body so that the soul may be saved. Then we go to heaven. But dead. Fuck off. It's a dangerous game. And it is of the devil. Don't go there. Don't try it. And if you are in it and you're listening to me or watching me, stop it now. That's what Jesus said. Repent. Repent. He's not condemning you. He's asking you to change. Before the judgment which will surely come falls. You are the one who can stop the judgment by stopping. Praise the Lord. All the forms of immorality have been addressed. We've talked about incest, homosexuality, lesbianism, bestiality. There's a new one now. Transgress, the, the transsexual. A man will dress like a woman and say, I feel, today I'm feeling I'm a, I'm a woman. And wear, wear a dress and put paper. Now they don't even put paper again as breasts. They go and take injections. So that's hormones. And then you see them. How are you? How are you? And they are dressed like a woman. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy 22. 
Is this, this is the type of message that Paul preached for three days. <laughs> that people couldn't go home. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 22. Go there. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy 22. Verse 5. <laughs> Please. Francis, we've kept our brother for long. He, he, he needs to go. Can somebody just talk to him and get his details? Sorry, this is a message. This is God. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Read it. We're going to close in the next two minutes. I'm going to cut it after this. A woman. Read, 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 read. A woman. You're not there. I say read. A woman must not do what? Put on men's clothing. And a man must not wear women's clothing. Anyone who does this is what? Detestable. In the sight of the Lord your God. What's he saying here? It's not that you cannot, God is not talking about the, the, the dressing. What if, what if, what if your motive for a man wearing a dress and walking on the streets? What's the motive? The motive is to deceive people to think you are a woman so that they can come after you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say, don't do it. Then some people say they are bisexuals. Some sleep with either a man or a woman. Then there is rape. Rape is when you force somebody to sleep with you outside of their consent. It's going on. In fact, this one is everywhere. Now you're even having movie stars, footballers being accused of rape. It's open now. All the big men are being accused that they force themselves on people. So the Bible is clearly against sexual immorality and there are repercussions. So many repercussions. I'll drop it here now because of time. Next week, we'll look at the repercussions. We'll look at the examples in the Bible of people that did immorality, what happened to them. And then we we'll look at the, the causes of immorality. And then we'll now look at what we must do to avoid sexual immorality. It's, it's like a seminar. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, just notice the things we are going to. Let me just give you the third side head, headings. We are going to look at repercussions, number one. We are going to look at the causes, what happens after, you know, the, the, the repercussions of sexual immorality. Then we look at examples in the Bible of those who were involved and the repercussions in their own lives. Then we look at what causes people to commit sexual immorality. And then we look at what we must do to avoid it. So for today, you have seen the word of God that we cannot, there's a lifestyle you cannot live. Praise the Lord. There are things that are immoral, against morals, against sexual morality. Where we were coming from in the world, it was okay. In those days, uh, if they say, like, for you to be a correct guy, have babes, two, three girls hanging at your back and call. You must, you must be somebody who is a, 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 a babes man. For you to be a correct girl, you must have about four or five guys hiking you at the same time. One girl in my university told me, you know, we used to play sports together. Both in, in hockey. She was in the male hockey team. And I was in the male team and she was in the female team. And then we kept seeing different guys, you know. So after one, they said, ah, which one? Or, see boys, I always tell you, say, ah, you, you don't know anything. That any correct girl must have three men, three men at the same time. So we, who were guys, she said, what? Three men? She said, yes. There must be the one that is the current bubble. Then there must be the one that is a chaika who is on stage two. We asked her, what do you mean by stage two? She said, if this current bubble in fact, stage two can jump in and took over. So then, then what is the third one? So the third one is the one I you. You know that you can promote him to two. This is how we all the guys we held men like this and we left say we are, we are finished. That's how the world is. Where we came from. We can't do that now. Praise the Lord. That's what God is telling us. Our mindset is different. Hallelujah. Bow your head and talk to God.
Uh, you, you have plenty to say right now. Brethren, bow your heads while we pray. Just to leave it here because this is a very important message. You won't hear it preached in church a lot. This is what people don't want to hear because this is what makes people run away from God. Because it touches the hearts of people. The Bible says, He who names the name of the Lord should depart from iniquity. I keep telling people, if you want to be in the world, be in the world. Yes, no, you are an unbeliever. But if you are in God and you say you are a child of God, you cannot, we repeat it again, you cannot be in any of those things. You cannot, I say it again, you cannot. Settle it in your heart. That's what you should take away from today. You cannot be found in any of these things. If you say you are a child of God, the Bible says our bodies are the temple of the Lord, that he who defiles this temple, God will destroy that person. May God not destroy us. Please, this is a word. Take it home. And I know my pastor said next week, if you run away next week and I don't see you here, I miss you like this thing. Come and hear the word. Hear it and know it so that you go and tell others. Because yes, you may not be in it, but you know many who are caught up in these things. All shame is just out of ignorance. They saw their mother do it. They saw their grandmother behave that way. Their great-grandmother. So it becomes a way of life. I remember as a young girl in university in this time, I kept asking, I do marriages in this land, no last. Husband and wife, husband and wife, and all that. They say, it's a marine spirit, like scrubber. And the mother must live to another man. The father must live, marry another woman. They must have other women. And then that the young girls, when they just start getting mature, the mother send them out. So go and look for a man. Go and bring us money in the house. It's common in this land. But you are in God now. We must put away that mindset. The same way we, we, we tell people, you can't be in God. You are still doing New Year Festival. You are doing all those festivals and all those things they do. And all those pouring of libation. You must understand. You may go down. And there's many things that are no longer permissible. Please take that away. You cannot. The Bible says that those who practice these things are not inherit the kingdom of God. Are not of God. He said, in the new heaven and earth, that outside were liars, the sexual immoral, dogs. People who did these things, they have no place in the kingdom. Immorality is not. And to go back to what Jesus said, let he who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our Father and our God, we have spoken your word to the best of our ability up to this point. Thank you for the unction and thank you for the ability to declare your counsel. I pray that everyone who has heard this, everybody who has listened, watched, will, who may be involved in this thing, will make up their minds to be prepared. And for those of us who are not in these things, this message will only strengthen our resolve never to violate your commandments in this area because the repercussions and the consequences are dire. As we will continue in with this message, we pray for the same grace and anointing to be upon us so that we can finish it and speak accurately the truth. For many are being destroyed by these perversions. Many are in the church. Many are falling by the wayside, by the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes. And Lord, this is the way that Balaam taught Balaam how the children of Israel can be defiled. This is the way to defile the church. Lord, and in this way, the church is being defiled. Starting from the pulpit. Going into the music ministry, into the ushering, into the congregation. Marriages are being wrecked. Homes are being destroyed because of immorality. Ah, Lord, help us. Help us as a church to turn away 
Now, may we not be like the Corinthian church that had immorality in their midst. And Paul said they were boasting. They were happy instead of putting aside the evil from amongst them. This word has gone. And let it be a fire and a hammer. And let it wash away by the water of the word any uncleanness in the hearts of those who are hearing the name of Jesus. Strengthen us in purity. Strengthen us in cleanliness. Strengthen us in true morality and in holiness. For so indeed, let he who names the name of the Lord the part from iniquity. Thank you, Father. We give you all glory and praise. As we pray in the Spirit, God will Spirit and fought the power of God in our physical bodies to help us to keep our bodies under and not to defile our temples in Jesus' name. Pray for ourselves in the Spirit. Let's say to the Bede Bagaza. 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 Let's say to the Bede Bagaza.